Both New York teams won on Friday. And let me tell you, the game in Cleveland was just weird. You are locked on MLB, your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast we talk about all of Major League Baseball. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. I've been a baseball podcaster for a while now, and we're wrapping up my sixth full season here as a host on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Today's episode is brought to you by our good friends over at Prize Picks. Download the app today and use the code LOCKDOWNMLB to win $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. Prize Picks run your game. And follow us at Lockdown MLB Pods on Twitter or whatever it's called now. And on Instagram, I'm your pal Sully, but Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. So, yeah, uh, if you are a New York sports fan, Tonight was a it was a good day for you, and uh, if you're a New York sports fan, there's a lot going on. Uh, the Yankees obviously are one win away from the World Series. It's not inconceivable that the Dodgers could lose two games at home. We saw last year Philadelphia lose two games at home to the Arizona Diamondbacks, and it's possible. And if you're a New York Liberty fan. Your team's on the verge of winning a championship. I've talked about this uh, several times. It's been a while since a major New York team has won a title. And the Liberty want to be the one to break that drought. The Yankees have a serious, serious uh, chance to, you know, obviously go to the World Series. It's probably going to happen in 24 hours. And um, the Mets are not dead. But if you're a New York fan, this must be a fun time to be a sports fan. Uh, frankly, I have to be complete, completely honest with everyone here. I do not follow the NFL, so therefore I have no idea if any of the New York football teams are good. But um, there you have it. Game th- Game four of the 2024 American League Championship Series was weird and dumb. It was from the law firm of Weird and Dumb. Um, I mean, the Yankees won the game. And let me say something very, very clear before anyone thinks I'm just a hater. The Yankees deserved to win that game because of how they played. They got the big hits when they needed to. And an underrated factor of this game was the fact that they let up, uh, they were up two runs before Cleveland even came to bat, and they kept adding on. They were up 6-2 to two in the bottom of the six because they got home runs from Soto, they got a home run from Wells, and they got a big three-run home run from Giancarlo Stanton, who is picking this team up in many ways and putting him on his shoulders. And right now, with the Yankees one win away from winning the American League Championship Series, personally, I would give the MVP to Glaber Torres. Glaber Torres keeps getting hits. Glaber Torres keeps getting on base. Glaber Torres keeps being in the middle of all these rallies. Uh, I mean, you could easily give it to Giancarlo Stanton, who is having uh, you know a big power series. Uh, I would, I, I personally would give it to Torres. But then again, they're handing the ball to Carlos Rodon later this afternoon, uh, afternoon California time, and if he gets the win and pitches well, then. There you go. Then maybe maybe the EFB people wants to done. Anyway, we're at that point where we have to think about things like that. But you also saw that because pitching is the way it is and no one's allowed to pitch into the fifth or sixth, Luis Heal didn't look great. But for God's sakes, the man only threw 79 pitches and he's done after five. And then we go through the the – parade of pitchers, and Cleveland had Gavin Williams, who let up two home runs. Fine. Now they do their parade of pitchers. And you saw that some of the pitchers just didn't have it. Cade Smith had a fabulous year, let up the three-run home run. He got clobbered. 
But then Jake Cousins came in. He let up some hits. And then Clay Holmes. By the way, we need to get rid of the, the hold stat. Clay Holmes pitched one-third of an inning, allowed two hits, and walked a batter, and was charged with a run being scored. And he got a hold for that. That, using the hold stat, that's a positive outing for Clay Holmes. One-third of an inning, two hits, one run, one walk. That's not a good inning. And then because the Yankees' bullpen was gassed, Mark Leiter Jr., who's in there because there are other injuries to the pitching staff, I believe it was Hamilton was taken off of the the uh, the roster, he was thrown in. And some of the more bizarre rallies I've I've seen in a while were taking place where Cleveland, you know, down 6-2, got a double for Ramirez that scored, and then, you know, and got uh, a nailer doubled. And then John Kenzie Noel just missed hitting a uh, go-ahead home run in the bottom of the seventh. And, you know, he just missed it. And we went to the we went to the eighth with Mark Leiter Jr. pitching because you know freaking Weaver's gassed. Let's up the double to to Naylor, and then the weird little grounder that he kicks and then throws away. Suddenly the game is tied, and they're brought Class A back in, basically to face the bottom of the Yankee order. And I I was listening to the game. I was walking my dog, Eleanor, and listening to the game. And the minute I heard Class A was in the game, I just shook my head, going like, they're going to lose. They're going to lose, because Class A is gassed, and we've seen that. This kind of pitching is not sustainable where you're using the parade of pitchers every single day. This type of pitching is not sustainable where in game four of a series, you're pulling pitchers like this and have to have the parade of pitchers coming in. And what did he do? He, he, there, was, there was an error. and I mean, he let up, immediately let up two hits. And then the error scored the go-ahead run and the grounder to, to short. And then another base hit, and we all knew. I knew, you knew, we all knew it was over. And then Cavley came in, and he didn't pitch great. You know, Bo Naylor hit a deep drive to center. If he hit a deeper, who knows? It probably would have been a double that could have tied the game. But that, but that, this is the way it is now. Pitchers can't go deep in the game, and the relievers are just gas, and it just turns into a war of attrition. It was a weird baseball game. And the Yankees should be trying to pull every single stop to win tomorrow. Because then you would get Saturday off, you would get Sunday off, you get a bunch of days to give everyone a chance to go in the whirlpool and get rested. The Yankees did everything to hand their second straight game to Cleveland. And in both games, in back-to-back -back games, Class A stunk. Class A's ERA in the ALCS is 27. And remember, he let up the three-run home run to Detroit. Who had on their bingo card Class A turning into Armando Benitez or Calvin Schiraldi or any year of Brad Lidge, save for 2008. This is what this is an all time terrible postseason for a legitimate all star closer. And this is, by the way, why we need to have the awards handed out in that little space of time between the end of the regular season and the beginning of the postseason, because Class A is going to get some Cy Young votes. He's not going to win. Tarek Skubal is going to win. But Class A is going to get some votes. And people's memory are going to be, Class A, that guy wet the bed. He did. And that's not the point. He was brilliant in the regular season, and he has been grotesque. And one reason is he is, in all probabilities, gassed. All these guys are gassed.
I mean, that's why freaking, uh, what's his name? Uh, um, Cade Smith, who's been dynamite all year, stunk tonight. Because he's gassed. They're all gassed. This is not sustainable. In fact, when I talk a little bit about the next, the other game that took place, uh, the Los Angeles versus the Mets, there's an interesting factoid about that game that just shows this mentality of pitching is catching up. And we got a whole World Series to play with two teams. I mean, assuming the Yankees and Dodgers win. Now, who knows? Maybe the Guardians win tomorrow or whatever happens. But uh, we're going to see all what all four of the teams have pitching staffs that are gassed. And, and a stat that happened today kind of stood out at me and went, wow, that's symbolic. All right, your sex life is important, but your schedule is busy. You don't have time to go to a doctor's office and get treated for ED. Through Hims, you get a personalized ED treatment without stepping foot outside your door. Hims is changing men's health care by providing you access with affordable sexual health treatments in the comfort of your home. Hims provides access to a range of doctor and trusted ED treatments like chewable hard mints and Viagra and Cialis, and they're generic for up to 95% cheaper prices. The process is 100% online, and so there's no need to feel uncomfortable in a doctor's office. Just answer a series of questions on their site, and a medical provider will determine the right treatment option. If prescribed, your medication ships directly to you in discreet packaging for free. No insurance is needed, and one low price covers everything from treatments to ongoing care. With hundreds of of thousands of trusted subscribers, Hims can help you find the ED option that works for you. Start your free online visit today at hymns.com slash locked on. That's H I M N S dot com slash locked on for your personalized ED treatment option. Hymns.com slash locked on. The products mentioned are chewable compounded products, which are not approved by or verified for safety or effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions require an online consultation with healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See websites for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based upon product and subscription plan. All right. L.A. played the Mets. And, of course, the Dodgers had a chance to clinch the National League pennant. And full disclosure, I was at work today in Pasadena, California. And I was surrounded by many of the other people at Pasadena High School wearing Dodger shirts and Dodger uniforms. And the game started around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And a lot of people, kids, maintenance workers, other teachers, were loving the fact that the Dodgers could clinch a trip to the World Series, their first one since the COVID year, and could do so today. And Pete Alonzo said, nope, we got to give our fans one more fun day. And I talked about yesterday about how, man, all those games where the Dodgers kept throwing shutout innings when they only let one run here or there. Well, today was the exception. As today, they only threw three you know, shutout innings. And the rest of the time, Jack Flaherty, who was so great in the first game, got absolutely punched in the face. Uh, Starling Marte, by the way, phenomenal game. He went four for five. He got three doubles, three. First one to do so since, uh, I can't remember who it was. They mentioned on the broadcast, someone from the 190, uh, I think it was the 1906 Chicago White Sox. We're going back to them. But Francisco Alvarez, three for four. Jesse Winker, keep that man in the lineup. He got on base three times. Pete Alonzo, he scored four runs, hit a three-run home run. Uh, you know, Lindor got on base three times. He scored a couple of runs. And I'm not convinced the Mets are going to win this series. I still think Los Angeles is going to the World Series. But at least the Mets showed they got off the map. They, they doubled up Los Angeles. 12 to 6, and the game is heading 
to game six. And do you, who has two thumbs and is happy about that? This guy. Why? Because I have tickets to game six of the NLCS. And I'm going to go to that game tomorrow. And I'm going to do a podcast from that game. And I may see the Dodgers clinch, or I may see the Mets force a game seven. I may see an all-time classic, or I may see a clunkerino. This has not been a great series between the Dodgers and the Mets. Most of the games have been blowouts. They've not exactly been uh, sitting at the edge of your seat. Oh, boy, big things are going to happen. But it has been entertaining if you like to see offense because every game, at least one team, is teeing off. But here's an interesting thing, at least from my point of view. You have the Dodgers, you have the Mets, you have the Guardians, and the Yankees all playing today. What pitcher do you think threw the most number of innings today? Which one? And notice I didn't say starting pitcher. I don't believe the the starting pitcher went the longest was Luis Heel, who went four innings. What pitcher had logged the most innings today? The answer to that is Brent Honeywell. Brent Honeywell of the Dodgers came out and threw four and two-thirds innings. Brent Honeywell, who pitched 18 games for the Dodgers this year, pitched all right out of the bullpen. And what he did today was he gave the Dodgers bullpen the day off. Eventually, Anthony Bonda came in and pitched the final out of the eighth inning. He threw two pitches, okay? He threw more pitches in warm-up than he did in the game. Jack Flaherty stunk today. He let the home run right away. He let up eight hits and four walks. That's 12 base runners in three innings. That's someone who should only go three innings. Him wetting the bed. Some of these other ones where you're going like, he's only let up two runs and he hasn't yet thrown 80 pitches and you're taking him out in the fourth and dipping back into the bullpen. That makes me scratch my head. Like David Peterson threw 79 pitches. And yes, that's a lot of pitches through three and two-thirds innings. But um, they took him out. In came Reed Garrett, who practically gained the game back. And Ryan Stanek, who did let up a home run, but he and Edwin Diaz pitched the final four and a third innings, and the Mets were fine. But Brent Honeywell came in and threw four and two-thirds innings, so the Dodger bullpen has today off and tomorrow off because it's going to be a bullpen game. It's going to be designated a bullpen game. So it's probably going to be Frazier's going to pitch the first inning, and everyone else is going to be rested and ready and maybe be able to give him an inning and a third. But Brent Honeywell went the longest. I'm. This is not me being grumpy old man. It's not. I swear I'm not like saying, going back to him, my day, they did this. No, just go back to the 2010s. You had pitchers who could go five, six, seven innings and not have to wear the bullpen to, their, to the nub. Where Brent Honeywell becomes the the innings eater. Look, whatever works works, and whoever winds up standing alone at the end, whether it's L.A., whether it's the Mets, whether it's the Guardians, whether it's the Yankees, whichever one winds up pulling it out of the hat, great, good for them. But this kind of pitching, you, you can't sustain this. You're just going to drag all these pitchers into the mud, and it's just going to be attrition. And I don't think that's good for the game. Now, I'm going to go over this in detail when the season's over because I have some. I have a lot of thoughts. Obviously, I've talked about this before. I have a lot of thoughts about what to do and what needs to be changed. And none of it is about, none of it is about me being grumpy. It's just going back to what was happening just a decade ago. And we're going to talk about that. But that's later on. First, we got games to talk about, and we got the World Series to talk about. And that's going to happen. We're going to figure out who's in the World Series in the next couple of days. When we come back, we're going to talk about a bunch of birthdays for the 19th day of October. And some of them are really interesting. Hey, let's hear from our friends over at Prize Picks. 
PrizePix is the best place to get real money sports action. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, PrizePix has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. Just make your more than or less than pick on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your money in cash. Run your game all season long. PrizePix is the best way to get on the action in over 30 states, including Florida, Georgia, Texas, and right here in California. And PrizePix invented the flex play, which means you can still cash out if your lineup isn't perfect. You could double your money, even if one of your picks doesn't do that. And PrizePix puts its members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks hit, I get my money in as little as 15 minutes. Download the app today. And use the code Locked On MLB and get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. Now let me say that again. Download the app. Use the code Locked On MLB to get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. This is all part of Prize Picks. Prize Picks. Run your game. Okay, we got a bunch of people we got to say happy birthday to. Happy birthday to Mark Davis, who in 1989 won maybe the most obscure Cy Young Award ever. I mentioned Class A is going to get some Cy Young votes. Well, back in the 1980s, dominant relievers got lots of Cy Young votes. And Mark Davis, who had a very good 1988, had a terrific 1989, and won the Cy Young Award and never had an all-star caliber season again. Now, Oral Hershiser should have won the Cy Young Award, but because his record was only 15 and 15, people are like, oh, he had a down year. Um, Mike Scott was a 20-game winner for the Astros that year, and he got some support. But I can't – I have what I call the Cohen Brothers rule. If you've already won an award, I can't complain that you ever won multiple ones. Mike Scott won a Cy Young, as did Hershiser. So good for Mark Davis. And happy birthday to Anthony Santander, an all-star with the Baltimore Orioles, who hopes that he'll be playing on his birthday one of these years in Baltimore. They'll get their act together, but uh, I thought they were going to go further this year. Hey, happy birthday to J. Hap, who spells his name the letter J, the letter A, and Hap. J. Hap. He played for a bunch of teams in his career, winning a World Series ring for his trouble in 2008. But J. Hap could have ended a lot of confusion in his life if he just spelled his name J-A-Y Hap instead of J period A period Hap. That's J-A Hap. And he goes, no, it's J Hap. And then spell it J Hap. That's why we have rules for names. Can't complain J Hap. Hey, happy birthday to beloved Texas Ranger Michael Young, who led the league in hitting several years got 200 hits a bunch of years in his career, and was a fixture in Texas after being stolen from the Toronto Blue Jays system. He spent almost his entire career in Texas, not a Hall of Famer, but one of those people who's just beloved by a fan base, was on the Rangers when they won two back-to-back World Series appearances in 2010 and 2011. He was one of those players you think about when the Rangers finally won the World Series, some of the great Rangers stars who never won it like Jeff Burroughs, like Ruben Sierra, like Julio Franco, like Michael Young. like And also, Michael Young, like Ricky Henderson, Greg Maddox, and Juan Marichal, ended his career with a completely forgotten cameo with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Speaking of the Dodgers, happy birthday to Tim Belcher. In the 1988 World Series, we remember the Kirk Gibson home run, that one game won. And a lot of us remember how dominant Earl Hershiser was, winning complete game victories in games two and the clinching game five against the Oakland A's. But what about game four? The A's won game three on a McGuire home run, and Tim Belcher went up against Dave Stewart, big game Dave Stewart, in game four. And shockingly, Belcher outpitched Stewart in the game where Bob Costas called the lineup the Dodgers had the worst in the history of the World Series, and the Dodgers Players were saying, kill Costas, kill Costas, because that was something he said back then. And Belcher pitched terrific and was relieved by Jay Howell, who the night before let up the walk-off home run to Mark McGuire. He pitched the final two in the third innings. But happy birthday to Tim Belcher, 
who won that unexpected game four. Happy birthday to Mr. Bat Flip himself, Jose Bautista. By the way, I'm going to do a segment in the offseason of the greatest home runs or the most memorable home runs for each franchise. I'm going to do the three most memorable home runs for each franchise. Now, obviously, the most memorable home run in Toronto Blue Jays history is the Joe Carter. Hell, even the announcer said he'll never hit a bigger home run in his life. I, but the Bautista bat flip in 2015 has to be number two, right? Well, happy birthday to Joey Bats. Speaking of great home runs, happy birthday to Rajay Davis, who hit the game-tying home run off of Aroldis Chapman with two outs in the bottom of the eighth in the classic Game 7 of the 2016 World Series. Another list I'm going to do in this offseason are greatest moments in the postseason for the team where the person who did this great moment was on the team that lost. Rajay Davis hit one of the most, that's one of the single most dramatic home runs I've ever seen in my life. And yet Cleveland still lost the game. So I got to find great moments like that, like the Ende Chavez catch in game seven of the 2006 NLCS. The Mets wound up losing that game. But happy birthday to Rajay Davis. And a huge happy birthday to Keith Folk. Arguably the most underrated, although now he's getting the due he deserves. But at the time, the most underrated hero of the 2004 Red Sox run where his great performances out of the bullpen shut down the Yankees, forcing the game seven, and he was the pitcher on the mound when they finally clinched. Back to folk. Red Sox fans have longed to hear it. The Boston Red Sox are world champion. And for that, I say thank you, Keith Folk, and Red Sox fans, thank you too, as we're all bracing for another Yankee pennant which may come tomorrow, and again, it may not. No one thought they were going to lose it in 2004. So I'm going to another baseball game this year, at least one. So follow us at Lockdown MLB Pods on Twitter or whatever it's called now, and on Instagram. I'm your pal Sully at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram, talking about a weird game in Cleveland, a decisive game in New York, pitching that cannot sustain and happy birthday to some heroes. This has been Locked On MLB. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.